Well, hi again, everybody, and as always, welcome to high school basketball non-league action tonight on a Saturday. And boy, we have a great one here in Maria Stein, Ohio, at the hangar. My name's John Zerby. Beside me tonight is Danny Holbrook, and we have the probably the premier game of the night, Danny, between the league-leading Marion Local Flyers of the Midwest Athletic Conference and the league-leading Spencerville Bearcats in the Northwest Conference. Yeah, anytime you get two athletic directors that look down the road and see a chance to play a game like this, you got to be really happy as a sports fan in Northwest Ohio because right now these are probably two of the best teams in this area in Division Three, in Division Four. I'm so excited. It's going to be a fantastic game. you got two different styles. The Bearcats want to get out and run. They've got really great guard play. And you look at Marion Local, their post play is just second to none. We're going to have a full house tonight as well, and both teams having a great season. Danny, what are some keys tonight? Let's first start with the Central Bearcats. What are they going to have to do to come in here in Mar at Marion Local's house and, and get a win over the Flyers? Yeah, right. First off, John, they got to have good perimeter defense. And why I say that is they have got to stop the post play. And post play defense starts with good perimeter defense. They've got to get out. They've got to guard the ball. Secondly, they got to run the floor. they got to make the bigs for Marion Local move up and down the floor. you got to wear them out. And lastly, they need the offensive rebound. I think that's so key. They've got to get second chance points on the offensive end. And for Marion Local, they're coming in on a hot streak here. They've gotten going. They've got really gotten going after you know starting the season late because of a football uh, state championship. What's it going to take for them tonight to continue on this hot streak? Well, first off, they, the bigs need to see the floor. And what I mean by that is when the ball goes down to the post, Spencerville is going to collapse. Those bigs need to see cutters. They need to see open men. They've got to get the ball to the open spot. Secondly, they've got to they've got to establish the post. They they have an absolute advantage in height with six eight, six nine, six three. They've got to establish that post. And what I mean by that is get the ball, go hard to the rim, and and keep your head up and establish the post. And lastly, they got to get this home crowd on their feet. This place is going to be packed tonight. It's already warm in here. It's a great home environment. Get a run, get these people on their feet, and you're going to establish a big victory. Well, you're right. It's already getting packed, and the excitement in the building is starting to, to build. And we will, when we return, have a nice non-conference matchup. It's the Marion Local Flyers. It's the Spencerville Bearcats. And it'll be next here on WSN. Welcome back to Maria Stein. We're at the hangar tonight for Spencerville and Marion Local. This great non-league matchup between two league leaders. We're going to go ahead and get this game going tonight. We appreciate the tonight's sponsor, scoreboard sponsors, Layfeld Industrial Welling Supplies with locations in Coldwater and Greenfield. Layfeld Industrial. Also, tonight's instant replay sponsor is Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to mattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. Starting lineups tonight, Danny, we're going to get going right away. We almost had a quick scare because <laughs> Marion Local honored the 2003 state champions tonight, and they, they decided to wear the uniforms from 2003, too. Yeah, thank goodness for the guys from the local radio station here. They got <laughs> us the uh, rosters we needed. And uh, uh, look, these things happen, but uh, we weren't ready for it, we but we, we, we recovered. <laughs> so Jaden Mesher is going to go ahead and get started here for Spencerville. We'll go ahead and start off with them, Dylan Cook, Evan Osteen. Carter Sutoff in the middle, Josh Henline, a senior, and Dylan Smith as well. And uh, for Marion Local, we'll quickly get through them. Austin Niekamp, Tate Hess, Jack Kanapke, Jaden Mesher, and Brandon Eink for the Flyers. Bearcats will go ahead and Dylan Cook's going to get the ball on the floor, and all of a sudden we got a stoppage in play. They're going to go ahead and restart the jump ball. I think Dylan Cook went back to his football days there. <laughs> he jumped on the ball and just laid on the floor. I seen that. It looked like they're going to call a jump ball. I seen this the other night, Danny. You caught a jump ball on the on the on the tip off. Typically, they do the tip off over, right? Right, right. I, I I thought Dylan Cook called a timeout, and that's what the the coaches from Marion Local kind of looked over and said they thought he called a timeout, but I don't I don't think they're going to do that. I, Looks like they're going to go ahead and give possession to Marion Local. And hey, this is just a, a Saturday night affair where right. things are going a little differently already. So <laughs> we'll we'll just see how it goes here. All right, Tate Hess. Quarterback of the football team is going to go ahead and start the Marion local offense here. Gets the ball to Austin Kneecamp. Good looking. Six foot nine inch sophomore Kneecamp is. And they're going to look inside for Jack Kanapke. They kick it over there to Jaden Mesher. Misses the triple, but Kanapke inside, and we got a foul early. 
Yeah, that's going to be a problem. I think the one of the biggest matchups on the floor tonight is going to be Carter Sutoff's ability to play with Jack Kanapke and Austin Meekamp. He he is the you know he's the biggest guy on the roster for Spencerville, so he's got a big challenge ahead of him tonight. Typically, you think six foot six that you know that's a pretty good size, but against Marion Local. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we're going to have another foul on the floor. and Scott Mock's going to call a foul there on the hand for Spencerville. And I do like what Spencerville's doing early. They're pushing those guards out of that uh, paint, and they're really playing them tied up top and making them go around them. So Mesher kicks it back over to Hess, and Hess is back. Now he's got the ball. He's going to look on the baseline, looking for Knapke. Austin Niekamp kicks it back out to Mesher. Jaden Mesher was hurt earlier this year, and he came back, and he was really effective shooting the ball, and he can knock down threes with the best of them. Well, it looks like they're going to get a charging foul on the Flyers, and Dylan Cook was in great position to get the turnover for the Bearcats. <laughs> Coach Cutmuller already took his uh, warm-up shirt off. <laughs> He's already getting fired up. I want to give him a congratulations. They honored him right before tip-off for winning his 200th game overall last night. So congratulations to Coach Gutmuller. We got a couple really good coaches tonight. They, they, these guys can coach. Done a great job over the last several years, and Spencerville's going to get on the board. That's Dylan Smith getting the, the easy double. He is so effective when he puts the ball on the floor. He can get to the rim. I really like that kid's game. So Spencerville has the first lead on the Layfeld scoreboard. And Marion Local's going to look to get inside. They get the ball to Neekamp. Neekamp's looking inside. They're trying to get the ball inside of Kanapke. They're going to kick it out. And they try it there, and there's a nice front by Sudoff. Sudoff gets it. Now they turn the ball over. That's a great job by Sutoff. He got in really good position. He used his offhand, and he deflected the ball. He's going to have to do that a lot tonight. He's really getting low down in his stance. Kanapke going to get Sutoff. Got Josh Henline to help, and now you're going to get a triple try from Mesher, and that's in and out. What a great job by Josh Henline to come over and to help defense. That is stuff you work on every day in fundamental defense, and Josh Henline played that really well. One of the things you, I think you'll see tonight is both teams, great defensive teams. So oh, yeah. early on you're seeing some fouls, but is that typical of two teams that play pretty aggressive defense, Danny? It is. Look, you want to get out and you want to establish yourself defensively. Defense travels. If you can go on the road and play good defense, you don't have to worry about scoring 60, 70 points to win a game. You can win games like this at 45 and 50. Evan Osteen at the top. He's going to swing it over to Josh Henline. Henline. Over to Dylan Smith. Smith takes it into the lane, goes up against Austin Niekamp, but a nice follow by Carter Sutoff. I had these guys against Delta St. John's, and Carter Sutoff was a man. When he plays hard, he really gets after it. And I'm not saying he doesn't play hard every game, <laughs> but when he plays really hard, he's sure. really good. Sure. Looks like we're going to have another foul on the Bearcats, and the Bearcat faithful are a little concerned about that call. They're going to get Evan Osteen with that slap on the arm. Well, I hate to tell you, Evan, but when you move your hands like that and not your feet, that's what they call. you got to move your feet and get in position. If you move your hands and reach around like that, they're going to call that every time. So inbound the ball. Goes to Marion Local here. Mesher. Over to Eink. Eink back to Mesher. Swings it over to Niekamp. Niekamp's going to drive baseline. Looking for Kanapke. Gets a nice pass and blocked by Sudoff. But a nice follow there by Eink, and now he can't get it to fall, and Spencerville's going to get the possession. That's a great job on defense. Spencerville right now establishing their defensive prowess right now and doing a fantastic job. Josh Henline, the senior, gets it over to Dylan Cook. Cook gets it over to Bring or Evan Osteen. Cook's going to try the triple here. Oh, look, <laughs> look, if that's happening tonight, Spencerville's in a good position because he's not a three-point shooter, and he knocked that down and looked really comfortable, John. Well, I don't think they had much. Well, they're going to get a foul here. And they're going to get Dylan Cook for the block. And, John, <laughs> I'm just going to say this. Those officials looked at each other, and neither of them wanted to make the call. <laughs> That's going to be a halftime conversation. Like, hey, listen. <laughs> so Tate Hess is going to get an opportunity to go to the free throw line tonight. Our free throw sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Hess misses the first one. You can call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Homestyle happens here. Like Lee's Famous that. Recipe Chicken. I like Tate Hess's game, John. He's, he's a floor leader. He was the quarterback on the football team. He's knowledgeable on the court. I love the fact that he goes to the rim just like he did there. And he, he goes with reckless abandon. I really like his game. 
Well, just a natural leader. You can see his aggressiveness, sure. and you can see that the other players follow his lead as well. I'm just so confused by wearing that number 40 tonight. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's going to take me a minute to get used to that. <laughs> Dylan Smith looking for Henline. Henline thinks about the deep triple. Say he's going to hit, shoot the jumper or misses, and Kanapke comes down with the rebound. I do like the play by Josh Henline, getting the guy in the air and going at it. I wish he would have put the ball on the deck and went to the rim because he had his man beat. So Hess now is going to drive, misses, kicks it back out to Kanapke, and they're going to reset things. Kanap, or excuse me, Austin Niekamp kicks it over to Mesher. Mesher to Eink. Spencerville playing great defense here. They are really getting after on the defensive end. Jaden Mesher. That's what that kid can do. He is a knockout three-point shooter. He is fantastic when he gets in rhythm. So Jaden Mesher pushes the score to 7-4, to four, and Josh Henline's going to try to match that, and he can't. And Knapke comes down with a fantastic rebound. Josh Henline was way deep in the corner. Mesher tries again and misses, and Evan Osteen tries it. Rebound here, but the ball's going to go off the back of the backboard, and they're going to give that ball to Marion Local. You saw the crowd jump up. If Mesher would have hit that, they'd have blown the roof off this gym. <laughs> <laughs> well, Danny, we're only a few minutes into the game, and this place is already loud. Oh, it's real loud. It's the Spencerville Bearcats on top of the Marion Local Flyers, 7-4 on the Leifeld Industrial Welding Supply scoreboard, and it's already starting to warm up here a little bit too. Mesher going to try the triple once again. I'm Got telling it. you, John, I'm telling you, they're going to have to close out on him. He'll do that all night coming off that high screen. He's feeling it. Jaden Mesher, it's two triples. He's got six points. Henline in the corner. He's going to try a triple, too. Just a little bit short. Gets his own rebound inside to Osteen. Kicks it over to Carter or off Sudoff's hands. That was really good ball movement. That, that's just unfortunate for Spencerville. Sudoff was in a good position. That's really good ball movement. I love the fact that Henline is getting the guys in the air. They're respecting his jump shot by coming out, closing out, and they're really getting up. Well, I'll tell you, it's, it's great to see, you know, Spencerville moving up to Division Three, ranked 17th in the state, Marion Local in Division Four, ranked 7th in the state. What an incredible small school matchup here oh, yeah. in February. Well, I'm going to say it. <laughs> Spencerville's better than 17th. I'm just telling you, I'm biased. I love this team. I love both these teams. Marion Local here. Mesher, excuse me, got another substitution here. Kyle, it looks like it's uh, Kyle Ungren. Yeah, Ungren in yeah. the game. Here we go. <laughs> We're going to have that problem. With it's going to be tough. Tate Hess gets the <laughs> opportunity here. Nice looking pass by Luke Pullman, who's entered the game. And it Spencerville ends up with it. Josh Henline drives to the hole, takes it with the left hand. And what a nice block by Tate Hess. <laughs> Tate Hess recovered really well. That's the athleticism I'm talking about. Hess is going to take the ball to the hole. Left hand, he almost gets the, the ball to fall, but he's going to go to the foul line. John. Look, it did not matter he didn't score there because he got Carter set off a foul, which is huge right now for the Bearcats. He goes to the line. He's shooting shots with the clock stop. So Tate Hess not only leading this Marion local team on the gridiron, but, boy, what a great leader here on the basketball floor as well. He's going to go to the Lee's famous recipe foul line here. He's going to get an opportunity to shoot two. He gets the first one to fall. This kid just wins. He just wins. You know, you coach kids. I know you've coached for a long sure, time sure. as well. You just you have those kind of kids that they're just winners. They're not only winners in the classroom, on the basketball floor, but they're just winners in life, and Tate right. Hess is one of them. Because they, they go the extra mile. They put the extra work in after practice. They do the extra studying. They're just good kids, and it starts at home. It starts with families, and I'm sure that kid comes from a great family. You can tell. Spencer, a nice pass by Carter Orr inside to Blake Summers. I told you before the game, I love Blake <laughs> Summers. That kid is a player. He, he is a player. Six foot five inch sophomore pushes the lead now to nine to seven on the Layfeld scoreboard. Marion Local now pushing it. Brandon Eink, Eink over to Hess. Hess thought about the triple. He's going to pull it. Looks like Dylan Smith got a hand on it, and Summers is going to come up with it. Great job by Smith to get out there and get his hand in there. So Henline gets it over to Carter Orr. Over to Owen Sensiball. Owen Sensiball entered the game, freshman. He can knock him down, John. He is a shooter, as you well know. So we're going to have a foul underneath here on Marion Local. We'll talk a little bit about Owen Sensiball, freshman. We said earlier in the year, hot shooter. 
Coach's son obviously yeah. spent tons of time in the gym, but very skilled, has a promising future. Yeah, what I've seen with Owen Sensabaugh right now is he is a freshman. He's going to make some mistakes. He's, he's, you know, he's, he's a shooter right now. He's going to develop into a really good player. He'll put the ball on the deck. He'll get to the rim. He'll do the little things he has to do. He's very well coached, and he knows the game. So I, I hope they're patient with him, and uh, he's going to really be good. So Blake Summers, boy, I think you've given him some like a spark tonight, Danny, because you were you were bragging him up, oh, and he's he's living up to that hype right I now. I had him last year a couple games. I loved his game, man. He's six five and can get out there and stretch the floor. And and Marion Loco's gonna have to bring a big out to guard him. So Spencerville pushes their lead to three with one minute to go here in the first quarter on the Layfeld scoreboard. And Tate Hess now looking inside to Jack Kanapke, and boy. There it is. You saw what he did, John. He got really good position. He held, uh, he held Summers off with his off arm, and they lobbed the ball over. That's a great play. And that gets the Flyer faithful <laughs> excited, and Dylan Smith is going to try to hit it in the lane, and he's blocked by Kanapke, and now Tate Hess is going to pull it here and wonder if they'll hold it for a final shot. Doesn't look like it. They're going to fire away. <laughs> They're going to fire away. That's Luke Pullman taking the deep triple. He misses. But I like the aggressive mentality. Well, I, I love Jack Kanapke. He saw what Blake Summers does on this end. He comes down there and says, look out, young man. I'm the big guy in the gym right now. <laughs> and he just hammers it home. <laughs> it's always great to see a slam right. or a dunk anytime in the game. But in the first quarter especially, what a great way to start this game. I told you, get the home crowd on the feet. That's one of the keys <laughs> to the game. And that's what they did. This he place heard, He heard your pregame show, Danny. That's what <laughs> Most happened. Most people do. <laughs> Evan Osteen now looking for Summers. Austin knee camp all over Blake Summers, and now they're going to get it back to Josh Henline. And with 12 seconds to go here in the first quarter, Henline's going to hold it for this final shot. He's going to have to go one on one with Tate Hess. It's a great matchup. He's going to get a, a screen from Summers, some help from Austin knee camp over to Owen Sensiball, and they're not going to get the shot off, Danny. And that gives us to the end of the first quarter, where Spencer holds on to a slim a one point lead, and we'll be back for quarter number two. You're watching high school basketball right here on WOSN. Tonight's free throw sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, and their newest location in Delphus. You can call us Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. And tonight's instant replay sponsor is Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to mattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. And Danny, we talked, you know, about this game beforehand. We hyped it up a little bit, and it's lived up to the hype so far. Oh, absolutely. You take a look at Marion Local, and they're going to try to establish that inside post. But Spencer was doing a great job of closing out on the perimeter and playing that good perimeter defense I talked about earlier. It's just going to be a battle right now. So Owen Sensiball going to take it to the hole, and he's going to add a little bit to his <laughs> game. And he gets that one to fall. Oh, Danny Holbrook called that. I said, put the, put the ball on the floor, son. Go to the rim. You know, it's interesting. You said he, he's a shooter, but he'll develop his game. Well, he just sure. drove the ball there and made a great play for Spencerville, and that pushes their lead to three now on the Layfeld scoreboard. Oh, <laughs> Brandon Ike says, look what I can do, boys. And that's the great thing about these two teams. So skilled, so well coached, such great defensively. It's just going to be a back and forth game as Summers misses that one, and Tate Hess comes down with the rebound. That's a great job by Josh Smith to split that double team and find the open man. That's really unselfish basketball right there. So Hess, he kicks it over to number 15, Brandon Eink. Eink, now to Mesher, Mesher back to Hess. Marion Local being very patient here, trying to get a good offensive routine going, a good rhythm. Spencerville really playing that aggressive defense, and Hess makes a nice move and going to miss the Jump shot here, and that's going to be an air ball and out of bounds. Now, I know that air ball doesn't mean a whole lot right now, but I'm going to tell you something, John. Both of these teams last night played huge conference games. Spencerville has a tough battle with Allen East. Marion Local has a tough battle at Coldwater. They're not, they, look, they're not as fresh as they probably want to be. Sure. So you're going to see plays like that, and you're going to see this tempo. If the tempo's quick and up and down, that favors right. Spencerville. So you're going to see tempo play a big factor in this game tonight. Now, historically, is that, is that pretty accurate? You know, you have these teams playing these, these games, and that's Carter Orr, sophomore, hitting the deep triple. But, you know, these Saturday games typically aren't, you know, uh, there's not a lot of excitement because it's just a non-league game, but we have that here. Will you see that? like kind of start to play in the third and fourth quarter as well. Oh, absolutely. And look, typically the coaches will tell you, we're gunning for Friday night. We want yeah. that league win. That Saturday night is icing on the cake. If you can get the win, that's great. But they're prepping for Friday night. They'll spend this morning working on these two teams. 
So Austin Niekamp, he's going to drive the lane. He's going one-on-one -on -one against Carter Orr. He gets a nice pass to Luke Pullman. Pullman takes it to the hole, misses, and a nice rebound by Blake Summers. He's going to get it up to Evan Osteen, but shoots it a little too far. Yeah, and that's where, that's where Owen Sensabaugh needs to understand the, the situation there. Look, you're up four. Just run your offense. Get down there. If you can attack the basket, that's fine. Don't try to throw it away like that. So Spencerville on top of Marion Local, 17 to 13. And we've seen a lot of action so far. This is early, and so if you're watching at home, please stay tuned. This is one incredible game between the Northwest Conference leader and the Spencerville Bearcats and the Midwest Athletic Conference leader and the Marion Local Flyers, and Jack Kanapke is a force. There, there's that post-offensive that post presence right there. He's getting really low in the post, and that's really affecting the Spencerville right now. Kanapke makes the play on Dylan Smith, and Danny, we might get another jam here. Nice block by Carter Orr, but Kanapke gets his rebound, and man, he is a force. He's playing hard right now, and he is a big body kid, and he's playing hard, and those two things are really good for Marion Local. Carter Orr gets the ball off of the almost turnover. Knee camp. Now we have a little bit of ugly play here, but I think it's just aggressiveness by both teams playing great defense. If both teams are playing great defense. You're going to have those batted balls, and, and, you know, just composure is key here. So Hess, he's going to get the ball over to Kanapke. Kanapke looking inside for knee camp. Knee camp. Kicks it out to Pullman. Pullman for the deep triple. Misses a little long, but what a nice rebound there by Mesher. Gets to Hess. Hess drives the lane. I talked to you about that earlier. He gets to the rim so good. He's so quick with that first step. He knows where to cut, and he did a great job on that set. That cuts the score to 19-17. to 17. Excuse me. Marion Locos now taking the lead over the Bearcats. Dylan Smith drives the lane, and we're going to get a team control foul. Looks like an illegal screen. On Spencerville. Yeah, they're going to say it was on Blake Summers. They said 45, yeah. Blake Summers, and Coach Sensabaugh is not happy about that. He wants an explanation, and I don't blame him. Typically, you see those kinds of screens all the time. And so, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, we, typically when it's called, it's kind of a surprising thing. I think Kevin Sensabaugh just kind of wanted an explanation for why that was. Well, the, co the, uh, the official just told Kevin to stop. And, <laughs> <laughs> excuse me, Coach Sensabaugh. Please stop. I've known him for a while. <laughs> Marion Local, you have Pullman. Pullman gets over to Hess. Hess to knee camp. That Mesh. battle in the middle, John, excuse me, between uh, between the, the, the big the Summers and Kanap, he's really good right now. There's Jaden Mesher again. He has got nine points all on triples, Danny. Yeah, I told you, he's really good when he starts shooting the ball like that. Blake Summers going to try it from the corner, and Kanapke gets a hand on it. What an athletic play by Hess, but Henline comes down with it. He's going to pull it out and reset the offense. Oh, and sense a ball, taking a deep one here. And Ooh. he's going to hear about that one from the yeah, student section. Yeah, dad, yeah, and probably say. dad, too. Yeah, well. you, saw, you, know, you saw the offensive rebound by Josh Henline. And what was fascinating about that, John, is typically when, when Henline gets that ball, he goes straight back up. But did you see Kanapke? He was at the high post, go straight down to yep. the block and get his hands up. That's that's really good. Defense. Smart basketball. Oh, I mean, yeah. that's the thing. You know, and you look at Jack Kanapke, and one of the things we, you know, I know you've watched Marion Local yeah. several times this year, so have I. He's so skilled. I mean, he's, he's got the size, but he's skilled and smart as well. Here's the thing, John. He's only 16 years old. He's only a junior. I mean, that's what people, you know, they when they when they grade him out. He is. He's going to be. Look at this. Look at this. He does a great job of getting his body in the right position yes. and getting the ball. Now he's going to get himself to the free throw line here. Our free throw sponsor tonight is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, and Jack Kanapke is going to have an opportunity to shoot two here. Well, look, he's six foot nine, and I and I defy you to find me five, six, seven guys in the state of Ohio better skilled and plays as hard as this kid does. I, I, I love this kid's game. You know, he, he, we got Austin Parks in the area who's absolutely yep. fantastic, and you got Jack. We, we're really blessed with some really good big men. So Kanapke will get a second opportunity here. He doesn't convert on that one. He converted on the first one. What a great rebound there inside. It gets blocked by Carter Orr. It's Mitchell Ranley with that, and Dylan Smith gets to the hole and misses. Orr comes down with the rebound, but he's going to be – they get a foul, a foul here. On the floor on Kanapke. Yeah, they're saying Kanapke with the foul. Oh, and Coach Guttermiller is livid. He is not happy about that. Well, that was interesting because it looked like Orr's feet were out of bounds, but they went ahead and called the foul on Kanapke, and I'm not sure what where the foul was, but – well, Dylan Smith made the right play. He went to the rim. He just missed the shot. He had a, a great move, and it was the right, absolutely the right shot. So Spencerville, Josh Henline, the leader of this ball club, is going to drive to the hole, and he gets one. 
Tries to get one, and he's going to go to the foul line to shoot two. So you see back-to-back -back possessions here, John, and you can tell the Bearcats are making a concerted effort to get to the rim. I love that, that offensive mindset. We're going to get to the rim. We're going to get to the foul line. We're going to get some easy buckets, and I love that. Typically, Spencer on up-tempo team trying to run, trying to get those points off of transition and off of defensive makes. And Josh Henline, the senior here, having an outstanding season. Uh, leader of this team, averaging over 16 points a game. Uh, and that's just one of the reasons why Spencerville's uh, in the driver's seat in the Northwest yeah, Conference. And he, he's only got one night, but watch him shoot, watch him drive. He's really skilled. He's a <laughs> nice player. I really like this kid. You know, one of the things I always look at, and it's not a, you know, a testament of what I, my basketball knowledge, which isn't much, but he does it both with the right hand and the left hand. Yes, and does. that's somebody I, I always think he spent a lot of time working on his skill. Sure, sure he does. Well, and he's coached well, too. I mean. Absolutely. So Marion Local now still holding on to a slim four-point lead over the Spencerville Bearcats. It's 23-19 to on the Layfeld scoreboard. Marion Local now working that offense. Luke Pullman headed over to Hess. Hess now to Meshery. He's going to try another triple. He's a little long on that one. And Summers is going to get the nice tip to Dylan Smith. Smith drives the lane, and boy, he did a nice job. He just missed it there. Blake Summers with the rebound. He misses. Evan Osteen gets the offensive rebound, and now we're going to get a push. <laughs> These, I'm telling you, Spencerville's playing so hard right now on the offensive boards. They are making such an effort to get those second and third shots. You get three shots right there, and it pays off. They're going to go to the line. Evan Osteen, what a great job by him. But not only that, Dylan Smith getting to the rim like he did. That, that is just a heads-up play. Well, the hustle. I mean, the hustle gets you yeah. a lot of places, and, you know, you, you can typically always see a team that plays hard. Spencerville playing incredibly hard tonight. So they're going to say the foul was on the floor, apparently. I thought, I thought it was on the shot, but. Henline gets it out to Orr. Back to Henline, and he's considered it. Carter Orr looking for Summers. Summers, or excuse me, Dylan Smith takes it with the left hand, and nice play. Defense by Marion Local, and we're going to get a block, or a foul on Blake Summers. You saw how quick Dylan Smith got to the rim. He just didn't finish there. Those are, those are you know, when you look at that and you see him get to the rim like that, you, you continue to do that, even though you missed that shot and you watch this here. It was a good play. He just It was a great defensive play. Right, we see it on the Matt's heating and cooling replay. Nice heads-up play by Marion Local, and that'll take Brandon Eink to the free throw line. Shooting the one-on-one, -on -one and he's a little long there. Ball is tipped. Looks like it's going to go to Spencerville. Uh, Jack Knappen tried to keep that play alive, and he just knocked it out a little too far. Spencerville now in the bonus. Marion Local with 18 fouls, and on the next team foul for the Marion Local Flyers, that will put Spencerville in the bonus as well. So looks like we're going to have a foul on Marion Local. and Brandon Knight. Three good officials tonight. Haven't talked about them. Scott Mock, George Mock, and Scott Steinbrenner. Veteran officials do a great job. That sends Josh Henline to the free throw line. Shooting the one and a bonus, and he hits the first one. Yeah, smooth looking stroke. He's a, he's a good, good ball player. Henline will get another opportunity at the Lee's famous recipe free throw line. Spencerville shoots as a team 68% from the line, so that could come into play here as the game goes on. And that cuts the lead to two, 23-21 on the Layfield Industrial and Welding Supply scoreboard. Spencerville picking them up uh, full court man to man. Brandon Eink setting the control as he kicks it over to Pullman. Luke Pullman back to Eink. Eink looking for Mesher on the corner. Austin Niekamp in the other corner. Eink's going to take it himself. He misses. Knapke right there to follow. He misses as well, and the ball's going to come down to Dylan Smith. Down to Josh Henline. Henline's going to shoot a triple. It's a little long, but Carter Orr comes down with the rebound, and now Blake Summers is going to try a triple. Everybody's feeling it right now. <laughs> <laughs> no one is afraid to shoot the ball right now, Danny. No, I would say some no. pretty aggressive uh, offense from both teams. Well, uh, both coaches are letting their kids play basketball. Jack Kanapke inside, and what a block oh by Carter Orr. Oh, my goodness, Carter Orr with the block of the night. Are you kidding me? I can't wait to see this on replay, John. <laughs> this is amazing. Six foot two, Carter Orr made a great block on six foot nine inch. There it is. Jack Kanapke, and we're going to see it right here. Wow. He's got some ups there, that's for sure. Carter Orr is playing really well. <laughs> Orr is aggressive, does a lot of the dirty work inside. Ung Sung Hero doing a lot of the good things for the Bearcats. After that play, though, there was a foul on Spencerville, which sends 
Kanapke to the line, and boy, he's a good free throw shooter as well. Yes, he is. You know, he's, a good, he's a good basketball player. His second attempt here falls. That pushes the Marion local lead to four, 25 to 21, with a minute and a half to go here, and right before the first half was ending. Kanapke's got nine already. He's really another foul. And now, and now, John, I think you're seeing guys getting a little bit tired. The pace has been really quick. And, you know, like I said, they played that tough game last night. Both these squads did. And now you're seeing guys reach a little bit instead of moving their feet and getting in position. Sure, that's a pretty good observation there. And Kanapke's called for that foul. That's going to give him two. And Coach Gutemola thinks this is probably a good time to get him on the bench so he doesn't pick up that third foul before the, the half. While Carter Orr converts on his first free throw attempt, cutting the lead to three. John, you look at this Spencerville team and the very local team, as a matter of fact, they're both really young. They really are. <laughs> I mean, this, this rivalry could happen for the next couple years. The missed free throw. Spencerville retains a possession. Carter Orr going to take it to the hole. Tries to reverse layup and misses, but nice rebound by Austin Niekamp. But we're going to get a foul underneath the basket. And there you're seeing just how important those guys are for Marion Local on that baseline. They cut that baseline off, and Carter Orr had to make a spinning, almost acrobatic shot just to get it up. So that's going to be the second foul on Blake Summers. That is going to send Marion Local to the free throw line now to shoot two. That is... We do not see this is Mitchell Ranley. Mitchell Ranley at the free throw line. Yeah, Mitchell Ranley, yep. <laughs> Again, we apologize we in advance, <laughs> folks. We are struggling with the numbers. But that's okay. I'm surprised they still had all the uniforms from 2003. Exactly. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> that's a testament to Dan Koenig, Mr. AD of the Year, here in Marion Local, doing a great job of keeping his equipment in tip top shape. And Luke Pullman's going to be called for a foul here against Evan Osteen. And that's what I'm talking about there. You saw Pullman, he, he turned his he turned his, uh, his body sideways instead of getting in front of the ball carrier. And, and you, you know, maybe that is to, you know, maybe he is a little tired, or who, who knows, but uh, you're seeing more and more of that right now. So that's going to send junior Evan Osteen to the foul line. Osteen, his first attempt rolls in and out, and that's a really nice rebound by Mitchell Ranley. Brandon Eink gets it over to Ranley. Ranley to Luke Pullman. Pullman looking for Austin Niekamp on a backdoor cut. And you saw, and, and Dylan Cook grabbed his jersey, and they didn't call anything, and the, and the folks from Marion Local are livid. What a nice cut. Carter Orr going to take it to the hole, and he's going to get a foul called, and looks like they're going to get Luke Pullman for this one. And when I say he grabbed his jersey, I'm not saying it was intentional. It's sure. just a natural reaction. Sure. He got beat on backside, and he just went out and reached out, and he, he grabbed his jersey. He knew he got beaten. Yeah, thought, right. I might as well foul, and yeah. didn't get the foul. Marion Local saw it. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to give that foul to Mitchell Ranley. It's going to send Carter Orr back to the Lee's famous recipe foul line, and he misses his first shot attempt. That's the beauty of a, a gym like the hangar. I mean, it's an old school gym. It gets hot in here. Oh, yeah. You can hear every word the fans say, <laughs> some good, some bad. Makes for a great ex environment. Well, watch these coaches. Watch Coach Kurt Gutmuller and watch Coach Kevin Sensiball. They're coaching their tails off. Don't tell me this game doesn't mean anything. <laughs> I know it's not for a league title. But, hey, I, if we're keeping score, I want to win. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon Eink put the ball over to Austin Niekamp. Niekamp to Luke Pullman. Pullman to Ranley. Ranley gets it back to Mesher. Mesher tries the deep triple, and he's missed his last couple. Started off pretty hot, missed his last couple, and Carter Orr with the rebound. Yeah, he was three steps behind the three-point line. That was an NBA three-pointer. That was way out there. 16 seconds to go here. Evan Osteen is going to look for the final shot here, getting instructions from Coach Kevin Sensiball. They're going to get a screen from Dylan Cook, and Osteen's going to try to drive here and attempt this nice pass to Dylan Cook. That was nice, John. That was a nice play. So Dylan Cook gets the backdoor cut after getting beat on the backdoor cut. And boy, Danny, we got a great matchup here tonight. It's the Marion Local Flyers on top of the Spencerville Bearcats on the Layfield Industrial scoreboard. It's 28 to 25. We'll come back here in just a few moments. High School Basketball on WOSN.
Welcome back to Maria Stein, where tonight's game is sponsored. Especially the timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. You can call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Also tonight's game, the instant replay sponsor is Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to Matt'sHeating.com to schedule your free estimate. John Zerby here with Danny Holbrook. And Danny, this has been an incredible game right now. So far, Marion Local holding on to a slim 28 to 25 lead over the Spencerville Bearcats. Yeah, I'd love to be able to say that one team's got an advantage over each other, but they're playing so even right now. Both of them are trying to do exactly what I said they were going to do. Marion Local's trying to establish the post. Spencerville's trying to get a little up-tempo, knock down some mid-range jumpers, knock down from around the perimeter. And it's it's just a really good game of two evenly matched teams. I mean, look, they can play this game 10 times, and I'm not going to tell you who's going to win. <laughs> Well, your keys to the game have matched up pretty well so far, so I give you credit for being spot on <laughs> with that. So we'll go here in the second half. Marion Local controlling the basketball, and if those uniforms look different to you viewers out there, Marion Local is wearing the throwback uniforms from their 2003 state championship team, which they celebrated tonight and had the team here between games. What a, what a great honor. That was a really nice ceremony. Got to hear about the coaches and where they've been and the players and where they are now. And what an awesome job by Marion Local AD Dan Koenig on putting that together. Brandon Eink with the ball. He's going to kick it over to Jaden Mesher. Mesher's going to drive the lane. He's going to shoot it. Ball misses. Evan Osteen comes down with the rebound. Evan Osteen does a lot of the grunt work for this team. He plays really hard, gets a lot of loose balls, a lot of rebounds. I really like that kid. And he's an unsung hero. He doesn't get a lot of praise, but uh, he does a nice job. Nice steal by Jaden Mesher here. He's going to put it up. We're going to get a foul by Dylan Smith. Well, Dylan Smith kind of got caught in a bad way there. He, he, he couldn't allow the, the uh, layup, and he, he fouls him, but unfortunately he got the shot up. Excited to see the foul there on the mats, heating and cooling replay, and that's going to send Mesher to the line. First of two, and he misses the first one. You saw it on Marion Local came out in the second half, and you saw that first offensive set, and they moved the ball really quick. And you wonder if Coach Gutmo didn't tell him at half, hey, guys, they're really playing high defense and really up in your chest. Let's move the ball around, get them out of position, and, and, and take advantage of that. So let's see if that works out that way. So Mesher hits the second of two. That pushes the lead to four. And now we got a turnover. Mesher kicks it up. He's trying to hit Austin Niekamp, but he throws it into the third row of the student section. That's going to be a turnover on the Flyers. And that's what we've seen in the first half, Danny. A lot of up-tempo back and forth teams creating turnovers. A lot of the turnovers came from just really intense defense. Oh, absolutely. And both these teams are playing really hard. And when you play really hard, you may not make the best decisions out there because you're so amped up. Evan Osteen going to drive the lane now. He's going to get his opportunity to go to the Lee's famous recipe free throw line. Evan Osteen, I'm telling you, that, that's the home alone kid. He looks like Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> Look at him. That's Macaulay Culkin. Evan Osteen gets his opportunity, hits the one. Going to get that second opportunity. Coming back from an injury earlier in the season and put him out a few games, but he's been back the last several. Really been an impact player for the Bearcats this season. Nice stroke on those two shots there. So that now cuts the lead to two. Marion Local holding on to a slim two-point lead on the Layfeld Industrial and Welding Supply scoreboard. Now you look at both teams, John Spencer offensively averages 65 a game, only at 27 right now, and then Marion Local at 51 a game. So we talked about that earlier, keeping that score down, and you don't have to have 55, 60 points to win this game. Jaden Mesher takes, picks up where he left off. Three of them. In the first half, and that is. Or is that four of them? That's, his, that's, that's four, number yeah. four, yeah. That's yeah, four of them. So now Marion Local now with the five-point lead, and Josh Henling trying to cut that light. He misses the runner in the lane, but nice rebound by Dylan Cook, and Cook can't get it to go, and Kanapke comes down with the rebound, and Coach Guttemuller says, get moving. Well, that was math right there. Dylan Cook at six foot going up at 6'9". That's exactly what that was. <laughs> so Mesher kicks it out to knee camp. Austin knee camp on top of the key with Dylan Cook on him. He's going to kick it over to Brandon Eink, and Eink's going to reset the offense with Tate Hess, but nice steal by Dylan Smith, and he's going to take it to the hole and get it to fall. Nice job by Smith of, of getting in position to get the shot away. He knew that he had a chance to make it or he was going to get fouled, and he makes the shot. You just don't see Tate Hess have a ball taken from him no. very often. Austin Niekamp in the corner. Triple goes in and out, and Henline with the rebound, and he's going to push it up to Smith. 
Smith going to go ahead and reset the offense. Yeah, nice job by Smith right there. Over to Henline. Henline thought about the trip when he pulled it back. He's got Brandon Eink on him, and Henline going to take the nice jump shot there. <laughs> That's a dribble. That was a Bryce Sense ball shot right there. He gets fade away. He comes up. That's what he can do, John. He can create his own shot. He can come off screens. He can get to the rim, and he can knock down the mid-range jumper. You just really don't see that in high school ball no, you when don't. You guys no, you shoot don't. off the dribble very often. What a great play by Henline. That pushes that Marion local lead to only one. Kanapke going to swing it over to Mesher. Another triple try, and he's a little long. What a great rebound by Tate Hess, and he's going to get the foul and go to the foul line. Tate Hess comes out of nowhere and gets it. Man, you're just seeing athletes right now, Zerb. <laughs> you're just seeing athletes. Tate Hess came from, like, the third row of the bleachers to make that rebound. Like, he literally came out of nowhere. We see it here on the mats heating and cooling replay. And what a great job of not only getting the rebound, but quickly trying to put the shot up and draw on the foul. We get paid to do this, man. We get paid to be at the biggest game of the year. <laughs> That's a good gig, isn't it, Danny? <laughs> it is, it is. <laughs> Tate Hess gets the first of two on the Lee's famous recipe free throw line tonight. He's going to get another opportunity here as we have some substitutions. Carter Orr coming into the game for Spencerville. Owen Sensball coming back in the game. And boy, we've just been back and forth, back and forth. Well, the one thing you know, John, is both of these teams can go 8, 9, 10 deep. And that's what's making this such a great game. Those substitutes are coming in the game, and they're not losing a step right. either team. And we talked about this off air a little bit. This was the district final in Division IV last year. Now, Spencerville moves up to Division III this year, so this will be the only time that these two teams will face. But well-coached teams that will probably both make good tournament runs. Absolutely. Well, remember, they split last year. Spencer will win the regular season in overtime. And then, like you said, Marion Local wins the district final. So Owen Sensiball going to be called out of bounds by George Mock. He's driving the baseline and stepped out of bounds, and that's going to be a turnover on the Bearcats. Tate Hess is going to come down. He's going to get a screen by Kanapke. And he's going to have a turnover. Sensiball gets it to Smith. Smith going to take it to the hole. He's going to draw the foul. Oh, he went down hard, too. And he's grabbing his back. He is, he's in some pain, John. He went down really hard. So we're going to take a quick look at it here on the mats, heating and cooling replay. And Smith, such a good player around the rim. And he's going to thankfully be up and kind of walk that off a little bit. But Dylan Smith, we talked about him earlier in the, in the game. You know, he's just kind of a quiet player. Yeah. But around the rim, he's so incredible. Yeah. This, this is some good officiating right there. The official took the time to make sure he was okay, and I, I like that move. You said it earlier. This is a good, good crew, and they're doing the right thing right there. Well, and I think, you know, this is a – I wouldn't say friendly rivalry, but it is. It's a oh, friendly. Absolutely I mean, it these is. two teams, they don't have any bad blood. They're playing There's a hard, lot of respect, yeah. A lot of respect. You know, and you've seen the Marion local players helping Dylan Smith sure. off the floor. This is why it's fun to be at this game. I mean, absolutely. you know, these two schools, very similar in size and in community as well. And Well, you're playing for also conference bragging rights <laughs> exactly. a little bit. NWC versus the Mac. Right. So, yeah. So, Smith hits the both of those free throws, and now Spencerville. Ties this thing up on the Layfeld Industrial Welding Supply scoreboard. We got a game on our hands oh, here, Danny. It's getting good. <laughs> it's getting good. <laughs> Jade Mesher looking for Kanapke over to Hess. Hess gets it to Mesher. Mesher gets it into Kanapke. They're going to double team him with Soot off an oar. He's got to leave somebody open, but Kanapke, he's going to draw the foul and go to the free throw line. Well, Kevin Sensabaugh's got a point. Carter Sutoff took an elbow, and it was an inadvertent elbow, but he took it in the face, and that's what Coach Sensabaugh is saying. And then they got the foul on Sutoff, so a lot of banging down there. You'll watch right here, because he takes one right to the chin. Right there. Ooh, right to the face, and Sutoff kept playing, and boy. That's a tough call. Like you said, it's inadvertent. I yeah, don't think yeah, there's he's, no he's playing basketball, will. you know, yeah, but at no the same will. time, he took an elbow to the face. Yeah, so. right, right. <laughs> so Kanapke misses. Jack Kanapke's a load. I'm here to tell yes. you, he's a load down there. Yeah, and that's not a five foot ten guy elbow. That's no, a six foot nine right. guy elbow. Henline drives that, the lane. There's that mid range, John. That is such a lost art, and he's really good at it. He's getting on a roll. He's got eight right now. That's something I think he's developed over the years. Early on in his career, shooting a lot of threes. In the last few years, you can see him really taking the ball to the hole and taking shots off the dribble. Nice skip pass to Luke Pullman. He's going to try to triple Luke Pullman. Well, you saw him double the post, and the guy from the backside had to get back, and he didn't close out in time. They can do that all night. Marion Local pushes the lead to three, and now they get a turnover. Jack Kanapke with a steal. This is getting intense right now. 
three minutes to go here in the third quarter, and third quarters are usually quiet. That's when the, the band <laughs> gets their food and the cheerleaders take a break, and this hasn't been quiet at all. Pullman getting aggressive, and he's going to get it down and get it to fall. Yeah, they, they didn't close out on the perimeter out there, and Luke Pullman took advantage of it. He's got such a quick first step, and once he knew he beat his man and he had his man on the backside, he's going to go to the rim every time. See that one here, and a nice play by Luke Pullman. Hitting the triple just a few minutes ago, now getting the opportunity to get a three-point play, and Coach Kevin Sensiball is not know, happy. Yeah, I don't know what the official told him. Not real sure, but they had a... Yeah, I'm not sure either. There's something going on, something he was questioning, but Pullman's going to get this opportunity here for a three-point play, and he's a little deep, but Austin Neekam runs it down. So Tate Hess going to reset the offense, makes a nice move into the hole, and we're going to get a charge. Did you see how high Tate Hess went on that? And you talk about Blake Summer stepping in there and doing a great job. I thought Tate Hess was going to hammer that home. Watch I thought that. Tate Hess was on the way down when he got the charge. <laughs> look, look, look at, at this. Th wow. Are you kidding me? Unbelievable. <laughs> what an incredible shot by our guys. Nice job on the camera work, but Tate Hess, you might have had a charging foul, but you just impressed us all. <laughs> yes, you did. Do it again, son. I want to see it. <laughs> Blake Summers, he, he looked up. <laughs> Josh Enline now gets the opportunity and gets it to fall, and he's going to get a chance to make this a three-point okay. play. So here's what you see, John. In the first half, Henline is settling for long jumpers, and then what happens? He comes out in the second half, and he realizes, I'm quick enough to beat these guys to the rim, and three possessions in a row, he's done the same thing. That's really good basketball. Josh Henline was slow in the first half. He's got now 10 points total here. Getting Spencerville going in the second half. And boy, that really cuts the lead to two now. And Marion Local holding a slim two-point lead over the Spencerville Bearcats. The substitution here by Marion Local. And so now Brandon Ike's going to bring it down. Trying to set the offense here. He's looking for Pullman. Pullman makes a backdoor cut, and Coach Guttemuller is going to go ahead and get a timeout. And we're going to go ahead and take a timeout here. Our timeout sponsor tonight is Metzger Financial Services. It's 40 to 38 on the Layfeld and Welding scoreboard. We'll be back here in just a second on WOSN. Tonight's premier sponsor is Charles River in Spencerville, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio. They're hiring as well. You can visit jobs.criver to apply today. That's Charles River in Spencerville. John Zerby here with Danny Holbrook. And boy, Danny, we've seen a really up and down game. We've talked about it uh, you know, in, in, in circles of saying that this game has just been exciting from the get-go. Well, it's like a chess match for me. I'm watching what both coaches have done since the halftime break. The, the adjustments they've made, you look at Marion Local, and I feel like their ball movement is so much better than it was in the first half. And you look at Spencerville, they're just attacking the rim, going right at it. Jack Knapke gets the reverse layup. What a beautiful pass. <laughs> oh, brother. that you, you don't teach that. That's athleticism <laughs> right there. That's a 6'9 kid. With skill. Six yeah, nine with, with a skill. lot of skills. So Spencerville now trying to get the ball to Josh Henline, and a great job by Jaden Mesher to knock that out of bounds, but Spencerville will retain possession. Well, that's a great matchup there, Jaden Mesher and Josh Henline, two athletic players that really, really exemplify what their coaches want on the floor. I like what you said about the chess mask with coaches, because sometimes as a fan, you don't always see all of the adjustments that are being made. Great <gasps> pass by Josh Henline to Evan Osteen. Evan Osteen with the cut. Oh, my goodness, he saw his his teammate in trouble and he cuts to the basket smart basketball by the Bearcats and that still squashes this lead to two points for the Flyers and now the Flyers trying to get something going here looking for Austin Ekamp he's got the ball here he's going to kick it back out to Mesher Mesher over to Brandon Eink Eink back to Pullman Luke Pullman that is Kanapke to Mesher we're going to get a foul yeah and I think I think Henline grabbed him or no, I'm sorry, Smith grabbed him, I think. We'll watch the replay. I'm pretty sure he grabbed him with his hands and tried to uh, move him up from the spot he was on. 
So they're going to call Dylan Smith with the foul here. Great eyes by Danny Holbrook to see that grab, that cloth being shown. And Spencerville fans didn't like it, but typically you don't like any call that's against <laughs> your team. <laughs> uh, we're all we're all homers. <laughs> we all have our favorites. <laughs> so Jaden Mesher now over to Brandon Eink. Eink to Pullman. Pullman's going to pull the trigger again, and he's got it. Well, they've been doing that all night, that skip pass across the floor and to get a, a wide open shot. Luke Pullman's been a shot in the arm for the Flyers tonight coming off the bench. That pushes the Marion local lead to five. How about Blake Summers? He's a little short on that triple try. Great rebound by Pullman. He's got Kanapke in transition to Mesher. And I liked right there what Jack Kanapke did. He knew he couldn't handle the ball as well as his guards could, so he finds the open man. Spencerville in transition. They want the foul. We got a kind of a melee there in the corner, and they're going to retain possession. Well, and this is dangerous territory right now. You look at Marion Local, they got a seven-point lead. This is a big possession for Spencerville. You don't want to go down double digits going into the fourth quarter against a team that can take the air out of the ball. Very well said. Under a minute to go here at the hangar, and Dylan Smith's going to take it to the hole. That's nice. That's nice. He, Dylan Smith has answers all the time. He made that look easy. It he looked did. like he was in his backyard just, yeah. you know, playing hoops. Blake Summers fell down, and Gennapi was screaming for the ball, and they didn't find him open. So now just about 30 seconds to go here in Maria Stein as Marion Local holding on to a slim five-point lead against the Spencerville Bearcats. Austin Niekamp going up against Carter Orr. Mesher thought about the triple, kicks it back over to Brandon Eink. Eink's going to pull it out. Yeah, they're going to hold for one shot here, John. Coach Guttemuller shouting out his instructions, trying to get his guys in position to go for this final shot. And I think this is a good call. They've got a five-point lead, and they've got the momentum right now. Kanapke, nice follow by... Carter oh, Orr. oh boy. They're going to say Kanapke pushed off. They're, they're, they're going to call him a charge. George Mock saying he pushed off. Wow. That's a big call. It's a big call because that's also his third foul yes. on Jack Kanapke, and we're going to see it here. Pushed off from the back. They're saying he pushed off from the backside. We couldn't right. see it because Blake Summers was shielding the camera, right. but they're saying he pushed off from the backside to get separation. Well, George Mock was in a good position to see it, that's for sure. Dylan Smith going to try to get the final shot off this <gasps> quarter, and about gets it to fall. Boy. We haven't had a dull moment here <laughs> in Mary Local, that is for sure. What a great game this has been. And guess what? Fourth quarter action coming back here. It's high school basketball on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Layfeld Industrial and Welding Supplies with locations in Coldwater and Greenville. Layfeld Welding and Industrial Supplies. Also, Matt's Heating and Cooling is our instant replay sponsor. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or you can go to Matt's Heating. Call Matt'sHeating.com to schedule your free estimate. Matt's Heating and Cooling. Danny, we go here in the fourth quarter. It's John Zerby and Danny Holbrook. We've got an exciting one here at the hangar. Yeah, well, now, look, you, you've thrown your best punches. We're at the start of the fourth quarter. It's a five-point lead. Now it's about composure. Who can go into the fourth quarter? Who can keep their cool? Who can take good open shots? And who can play good defense? And so far, so good for both teams. And then even one of the things I've been impressed with by both teams are guys coming off the bench, not just the starters. Oh, right. You said guy, you know, eight, nine guys playing at this point. And we've seen a lot of that, these guys making impact coming off the bench tonight. Josh Henlang going to try the deep triple. He's a little short. What a great rebound by Luke, Pol Luke Pullman. Well, Pullman got up on that one. Pullman's had a really nice game. He's giving them a shot in the arm coming off the bench tonight. And Tate Hess back in the game. We're going to get a foul. Austin Niekamp had the ball. We're going to get a foul. Looks like they're going to give that foul. Carter Orr, I believe. Carter Orr, yeah. yeah. He's playing a little aggressive defense there. That gives Spencerville 16 fouls, so we're going to see some free throws coming up here in the fourth quarter. And Austin Niekamp, it's been quiet tonight. Yeah, and, and oh, oh my goodness, oh they boy. got Kanapke. That's his fourth foul. Oh boy. That is huge. Here's the thing, John, that's his fourth foul. Niekamp's only got two points. Right. That hasn't been much of a factor on the offensive end. Now, right. defense is a different story. That is sure. huge. That is huge. Well, that foul at the end of the third quarter has now come into play because that gives Austin, or Jack Kanapke, like you said, that fourth foul. And Kirk, Coach Kurt Gudemuller pretty upset by that. I think he ran a 4-3-40 down the sideline <laughs> right. there to talk to the official. Well, don't be surprised if Spencerville doesn't start attacking that rim. Right, right, right there. That's what I'm talking about. 
Those nice back pass. cuts, yeah. Yes. Excuse me, those back cuts. And you're going to see them go to the post a lot more now. Hey, look, it, it's no secret. When you take a 6'9 kid as good as Kanafki out of the game, that's when you go to the rim. You see a great pass by Evan Osteen. Gets it inside to Carter Orr, and they're going to get Brandon Eink on that foul. That's going to give Carter Orr the opportunity to go to the Lee's famous recipe free throw line, and he f hits his first one. So, you, so you're scoring points with the clock stop. You don't think that play at the end of the third quarter doesn't matter with Spencerville got a stop down there? That was huge. What an incredible play. Maybe could be a turn of events here in this ball game, and right. Orr hits the second of the most important free throws right now in this game. And that pushes the lead to three. Marion Local on top of Spencerville, 47 to 44 on the Layfeld Industrial Welding Supply scoreboard. Luke Pullman has the hot hand tonight. He's going to kick it over to Mesher and Mesher to Tate Hess. He's looking inside to Austin. He can't. He can't play it inside, and he's going to get the foul. Nice job by Austin Neekamp. You see what he did? He set Blake Summers out. He went to the left, come back to the right, and Summers didn't adjust enough, and he got a nice shot off, and he got fouled. And that and that's an interesting thing, too, with Kanapke out of the game. I mean, Neekamp's playing a lot of wing and playing out beyond the paint. Now he moves inside. How does that change the game? Well, look, Spencerville's going to be able to double team. When you've got a 6'9 kid on one side and a 6'8 kid on the other, you can't double team. Sure. You can try to help defense. Sure. But now... Spencerville, I think it's in Spencerville's favor, as okay. I said earlier. It, it's going to help. But Austin Neekamp's really a good offensive Austin player. Austin Neekamp has really improved. Yeah. He's been a little bit quiet tonight for him, but um, yeah. he's got on the board here with two points from the uh, from the free throw line. That gives him four for the game. Dylan Smith now running the offense for Spencerville. He's going to drive the lane at Dylan Smith. <laughs> that was pretty. That was pretty. He just makes it look easy. Left-handed layup takes it to the hole, and that still keeps the lead at three. They're looking inside to Neekamp. Neekamp makes a move on Blake Summers. Nice left hand in the lane. Yeah, he didn't get a lot of help on the back side. That's, that's a uh, failure on the other side of the floor. So now that goes that lead goes back to five, and Evan Osteen looking inside, and they're going to get they're going to get Brandon Ike with that reach. Well, credit Marion Local. They've kept that five-point cushion since the start of the fourth quarter, and that's not easy with Kanapke on the bench. But, hey, Austin Neekamp with a great move down low. It is really hard, too, John. When, when you've got a big kid like that, you want to play. You don't want to foul him because he's going to get the shot off because you're not going to block the shot. So that's going to put Carter Orr back at the Lee's famous recipe free throw line. He's going to get the opportunity for one and a bonus, and he's going to get that bonus opportunity. Carter Orr's having a nice night. He's got eight points. He's, he's a nice player. A lot of hustle. A lot of the unsung hero type of stuff around the rim for oh, yeah. Carter Orr. Yeah, he averages 5.8 a game, and he's got nine. That's huge for the Bearcats. So Carter Orr hits big free throws. Marion Local holding on to a slim 51 to 48 lead, and this has been as well as advertised, Danny. This game back and forth between the Midwest Athletic Conference leaders and the Northwest Conference leaders. Austin Neekamp. He's going to kick it back out to Tate Hess, and they're really looking for Neekamp here. He's going to get Summers, and he doesn't get it to fall. Still a good look. Still a good look. I take it every time. I take it every time. It just rolls off the rim. So Josh Enline now going to take a shot from the... Oh, he missed that one, and it's going to stay with Marion Local. But nice shot by Josh Enline to come down and get the opportunity from the left wing. Yeah, the Whites are going to bring Owen Sensiball in for some outside shooting. And let's see if he doesn't, uh, if they don't run something real quick off the bat here to get him a shot. And Coach Guttemuller's not going to waste any time either. With uh, well, just under six minutes to go, he's going to yeah. bring Jack Kanapke back in the game. And I don't, I don't think it's a bad, you know, I'm not questioning the move. It's not a bad move. He's got four fouls, but you're, you're in a tight game here. you got to have your best players on the floor. And I'm sure he told Jack, hey, listen, uh, get your hands straight up, don't yep. move, don't foul. Easier said than done sure. in the moment. Sure. So Tate Hess gets it over to Neekamp to Pullman. They're going to go inside to Kanapke. They're going to double Kanapke. He's going to kick it out to Hess. Hess thought about it. Back to Kanapke. He's going to drive the lane. Jack Kanapke is going to get fouled. They're going to get that one to Carter Sudoff. Typically, I like coaches when they typically they'll put their best player on the same side as a post player. That way you got to respect the post player. They've got Tate Hess in that corner. We've already seen his ability to go to the rim. So if it goes to the side, you can't double team. I mean, it's it's really a, it's really a tough situation if you're Spencer goes. Sure. And, that, and that's very well explained because sometimes you see that and you're like, why are they doing that? Right. And very well explained that, that it's sometimes impossible to, yeah. to, to do that. Kanapke comes back in and makes an immediate impact and hits that first free throw to push the Marion local lead to four. 
He'll get another opportunity here. Buries it. So Kanapke comes in for a second, and he'll come out. Coach Guttemuller achieving what he wanted, not wanting him on defense. Yeah, he's going to play know? a little offense yep. defense, and I, I like that move. So that puts Mitchell Ranley back in the game, and that's going to give Spencerville a timeout here. Our timeout sponsor tonight is Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan for the future. We'll be back here in just a few moments. It's the Marion Local Flyers 53 and the Spencerville Bearcats 48. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Tonight's free throw sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken with locations in Lima, Walpock, and now Delphus. You can call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here at Lee's. We've seen an incredible game, and of course we have several good games we broadcast over the last few nights, and with the tournament coming up, a big day tomorrow for most basketball teams with the tournament draw. Yeah, everybody's going to decide who, you, who you're going to play. And I said it this morning, uh, I already got my state tournament tickets. I go every <laughs> year, and I'm really excited. John, there was a great uh, interaction down on the bench between Carter Setoff and Dylan Cook, and Carter Setoff was upset about something, and you can see Dylan Cook just encouraging him and, and right in his face and telling him, hey, you can do this. I don't know what it was about, but that's what high school basketball right there is. That's what you remember, your teammates and, and the camaraderie you share, and that was a great moment. I'm glad you brought that up because Dylan Cook, we, we you know, kind of talked about him early. He's a starter, starts, doesn't play a lot, but there's an important role sure, of being the encourager role, yeah. of the team. And what a great job by Dylan Cook there. Yeah. Well, so, this is a big defensive presence here for Spencer, but they got to get a stop. So Tate Hess makes a nice cut. He's going to get the ball to Kanapke, and Kanapke's going to get it inside. What a great pump fake. Gets Carter Orr off his feet. And yeah, once Carter Orr went to the feet or went to the, high, uh, to the sky, he knew he was going to go there. <laughs> So now Marion Local, sneaky, but up to a seven-point lead, 55-48 to 48 on the Layfeld Industrial and Welding Supply scoreboard, and Evan Osteen turns that one over. Well, now you're going to see Marion Local kind of slow this thing down here a little bit, and I'd be surprised if they didn't take a little time here moving the ball around the perimeter and get anything at the rim. So watch for Kanapke and Meekamp to go down low. So Tate Hess, he's got the ball. He's going one-on-one -on -one with Blake Summers here. He picks up his dribble, and he gets it over to Jaden Mesher, back to Hess. Hess is looking inside for Austin Niekamp, but he's going to take it himself, and he misses, and Jack Niekamp gets the follow, but he misses as well. Yeah, Kanapke got the, got, was in the right position, in the right place. He just missed the shot. Nice rebound by Evan Osteen. Osteen going to get the ball over to Josh Henline. Henline drives the lane. Jump stops, kicks it back out to Summers, and Summers back to Osteen to Henline for the triple, and he's a little short. Yeah, you saw Smith there almost go over the back of the opposing player and just trying to do his job there, and we're getting down to crunch time here. And if you're Spencer, are you, are you in a position yet to, to start fouling, or do you just continue to play the aggressive defense here? No, well. <laughs> well, Jack right. Kanapke might have changed that, yeah, right? Yeah, it's, it's getting away from him right now. But I think you can still – you got to come down, you got to get some buckets. And you, but here's the thing, you got to defend. And right now, they don't have any answers for Marion Local. And then scoring in transition like this. And what a great pass from Tate Hess to Jaden Mesher. And now this lead is 11. It came – 11 came from nowhere, and Henline's going to go to the – Foul line here, he's going to get a well, foul against Tate Hess. Saw Coach Gutmuller screaming at his kids because what he did there is he fouled. But not only that, he puts him on the line with the sure. clock stop, which is huge. That's exactly what he didn't want to do. And look, th th this game could end right now at 11. Sure. You and I both know this was not an 11-point game. Th this is two of the best teams <laughs> in Northwest Ohio. Well, that's why I said it was kind of sneaky. It was three points, yes, and then you right. look up and it was nine. You know, yeah. it, it went quickly. Henline hits his first of two. He's a six-foot, two-inch senior. Had an outstanding senior season. Been playing since he's been a freshman. A lot of experience on that court. Gets a second opportunity here, and he buries it. And we're going to get a timeout from Spencerville. Coach Kevin Sensiball is going to go ahead and meet with his team and meet with his coaches. Our timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services. Have your plan ready. We're going to take a timeout here as well on WOSN.
Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan for your future. You can call 419-225-6067, or you can visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. And Danny, with about three minutes to go here in the fourth quarter, you see Spencerville calling the timeout. Coach Kevin Sensible talking to his team. What is the strategy at this point? Well, he's telling his kids, look, we got to take good shots. We, you know, we can't just take any shot, but we got to hurry up. We can't, we got to be a little bit uh, speedy here, and, and we got to defend. If you don't defend down here, you're in real trouble. And, and with a nine point lead, you're going to watch Marion Local try to take the air out of the ball here a little bit. We see a full court man to man defense now, and a little run and jump, and that's going to leave Kanapke open for. A jam. Well, he just got behind the defense, and that, that happens when you're in, 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 in a press like that. It shouldn't happen, but it does. His jam counts two now. Blake Summers answers with two. It's still a nine-point lead. You're still in this thing. Sure. You've just really got to defend. You've got to get a steal, and if a shot goes up, you've got to get the rebound. Carter Orr about got the steal there, but great job by Jaden Mesher. And Orr does get the steal this time. Gets it to Smith. Smith going to take it himself. Misses, but follows his rebound. Gets it. Carter Orr now with it. It's going to take the ball the whole misses, and a nice rebound by Austin Niekamp. Yeah, he's kind of a little bit herky-jerky there. I wish he would have went to the rim. Nice pass by Luke Pullman to Austin Niekamp. And, you know, we talked a little bit about maybe – Towards the end of this game, both those teams having an emotional game last night. You can see that both teams are tired. They are. Oh, there's a nice shot. But, John, here's what you're also seeing. You're also seeing big guys for Marion Local that flat out run the floor. I mean, that that is huge. When you've got a 6'9 kid and a 6'8 kid who beats the defenders back to the post, that, that that's just effort. That's something you right. can't coach. If you've got kids that are giving you effort like that and they're skilled like those guys are, I mean, I could talk about that all day. <laughs> and that's probably why, you know, I don't want to jinx either team, no, but no, no. you'll see both these teams make long tournament runs oh, because absolutely. of the way and the intensity that they play. Well, look, whoever wins this game, the team team that loses, their fan base should not walk out of here going, oh, we're in trouble. Are right. you kidding me? This is what the tournament's all about. You're not going to – look, Spencerville's not going to place a team as good as Marion Local or probably until districts, district finals. And then Marion Local's not going to play a good team like this until, again, district finals or regionals. Sure. Our timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services. We have some good lineup of games tomorrow too, Danny. Liberty Benton versus Fort Lormy. Girls basketball, that's going to be tomorrow night at 5.30 p.m. And then Crestview and Delphi St. John's boys basketball. Boy, that'll be a nice matchup. Crestview's having a fantastic season. That's at 7 o'clock on WSN. And then tomorrow night as well, Van Wert versus St. Henry. It's going to be an 8.30 game on WSN as well. Our guys Mark Shine and Darren Gilbert over at St. Henry tonight watching that <laughs> grudge match. I love listening to Gilly. Oh, he's the best. Him and Mark Shine are just two of my favorite people. <laughs> That's why I'm like ninth string. You're like, you're up in the strings. <laughs> but I just like to listen to you guys and learn from you. Jack Kanapke inside. Boy, Jack Kanapke has been a force. He's got 23 tonight. He's had a big time game. Hey, your best players play big in big games, and that's exactly what Kanapke's done tonight. Josh Henley going to try the triple, and he's just going to try to get the opportunity to get Spencerville on the board. And now Marion Local holding on to that 10 point lead. We're under two minutes to go, and Spencerville. Now going to have to foul, and looks like, well, Coach Gunnamole is going to call a timeout as well. Yeah, well, now's the time you're going to, you asked me earlier, when do you foul? Probably a good <laughs> idea about right now. <laughs> but I don't see a lot of worry on Coach Sensabaugh. Sure. You know, you look down there, you see the coaching staff, they're not, you know, vividly upset. They understand this was a big game. If they could have got a win, they'd have took right. it. But right now they're on the, uh, the other end of it, and he's not upset. He understands his kids are going to learn from this. His kids are going to sure. grow from this. They're 16-1, they're and one, John. Right. 17 I mean, they're right. just having a fabulous season. Yeah. So, And you look at Marion Local, his kids have learned too. They've handled everything well. Jack Kanap has shown you why he is one of the premier big men. Marion, or excuse me, Spencerville didn't have an answer for him tonight, but that's not a bad thing because there's not a lot of right. clubs in Ohio that right. have an answer for Jack Kanapke. Yeah, he is uh, skilled and not only skilled, but his size and all those things, but he's smart. Oh, yes. I mean, you know, just an incredibly yeah. smart player. Now, I think I've been impressed with tonight, and we talked about it a little bit earlier, is the two veteran coaches. I mean, oh, yeah. just like you said, the chess match. And Luke Pullman's going to get a foul, and he's going to go to the foul line, but you can see the experience in coaching. Both guys not getting, you know, riled up too much, making adjustments 
And that, you know, that comes with experience. You, you and I both know as coaches, you make a lot of mistakes early in your career with things that you, you know, these guys, you can see they're both like masters at their craft. Well, they're in it for the right reason. They're in here to develop these kids, not only on the court, but off the court. They're both really good guys. You know, we walked in the gym tonight, and both those guys spoke to me. And, you know, I get a handshake from Coach Gutter Miller every time I'm down here. And I've known Kevin since a long time. They're just quality people. Sure. And when you have quality people leading good kids, or not only that, leading kids in general, right. things, the good things are going to happen. Absolutely. Luke Pullman, he's made an impact tonight. Ten points for Luke Pullman. So Josh Henline going to fire up the triple in and out. Pullman grabs the rebound. Josh Henline's had a nice game for Spencerville tonight. One of the things I've noticed from Henline is when Spencerville's kind of tight, he's kind of he takes over. He's he the does. leader. He, he's going to take control of the game. And now Marion Local trying to stall here a little bit. They're going to try to get back to the free throw line. Pullman going to take the shot here. Doesn't get it to fall. Ball being tipped around. It's going to go to Spencerville. I don't know if Coach Gutmiller wanted him to take that shot, but here's the thing. He, he beat his defender. He was on the block. I mean, there's no reason not to take the shot sure. up uh, 12. Sure. 67 to 55 on the Layfeld Industrial scoreboard, and Dylan Smith makes another basket at the hoop. Because that's what Dylan Smith does. He is a <laughs> shot maker. He's got 12 tonight. He's had a really good game. I think he's taken one outside shot, and not a three-pointer, yeah. just one outside shot. Every other shot's been around the rim. Kneekamp being guarded by Carter Orr. Kicks it back out to Mesher. Mesher over to Pullman looking for Jack Kanapke, and they're finally going to get Dylan Smith here with the foul. Yeah, I, I got to believe that may be the last foul of the night uh, after they go to the line here, Spencer, or whatever they do on the offensive set. But. Get a nice ovation from the home crowd. They've seen a very physical, intense, and exciting game tonight. Well, they brought out all the old uh, the old players from the 2003. I say old, <laughs> 20 years old. They're still kids. And they're still younger than us. <laughs> right. Oh, they're a lot younger than me. Absolutely. They brought them out. They had a great ceremony night. They had a ceremony for the coach for 200 wins. And uh, they realize it's a big game. The place is packed. It's a great environment. You can't get any better than high school basketball in Northwest Ohio. So. Luke Pullman pushes that lead to 11 points. Marion Local 68, Spencerville 67. Dylan Smith shoots, misses. Nice rebound by Josh Henline, and we're going to get a foul. We're going to get a travel. Well, yeah, Henline and Summers were both going for the ball, and they got kind of tied up there. I know they don't like the call, but. <laughs> and this has been a well-officiated game. These, these guys have kept the game clean. It hadn't been dirty by any means, and Kanapke's going to get a nice applause as he Takes a seat on the bench. 23 points tonight for Jack Kanapke. What a force. Yeah, he did a great job. And I, I think you said it best earlier, John, when you said these schools, they respect each other. And you see it on the floor, and you see it with the fans, and you see it with the coaches. And they do a really good job. So they're going to get a quick timeout here. Marion Local's going to take a timeout, and we're going to take a quick timeout as well. It's the Marion Local Fire 68, Spencer Will Bearcats 57 on WOSN. Tonight's premier sponsor is Charles River in Spencerville, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio. And guess what? They're hiring. You can visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. That is Charles River in Spencerville. With 20 seconds to go, we're here at the hangar in Maria Stein. It's the Marion Local Flyers holding on to an 11-point lead over the Spencerville Bearcats at 68-57. to Tate Hess is going to inbound the ball for Marion Local. You have Spencerville putting on a man-to-man -man pressure here, full court. Brandon Eint gets it back to Hess, and then we're going to get a foul on Dylan Smith. Yeah, they were trying to get the steal there. and I don't think Smith intended to foul. He just kind of got caught off in a bad position. Man. So Tate Hess, quarterback of the football team, going to get an opportunity to, to go to the free throw line. One of the things I'm always amazed by Marion Local is, is that, you know, if you're Coach Guttemuller, you don't scrimmage. I mean, with football going so late. Oh, right. No, that's you, a great point. You don't, you don't really get a chance to get rolling. And it's it's February, and he's got his team rolling. You know what I'm saying? They don't scrimmage. You know, they don't – how do you do team pictures? You know, I mean, <laughs> how do you pass out uniforms? All that stuff that normal teams get to do, they, it's so unorthodox because of the success of their football program. I just think he does an amazing job of getting his team ready and in prime position this time of year. He does. And, and you're, like you said, they have to get a late start. And, and they're always rescheduling games, shuffling up and down the schedule. And look at him here. This is as good a team as there is in Division Four in the state of Ohio. I'm telling you right now, this team is going to be a tough out in the tournament. 
Nice job by Tate Hess to add on to that score. And it's 70 to 57. Dylan Smith gets another opportunity. We have some substitutions in for Marion Local. Some guys getting the opportunity to get in the game, and that means that we're going to have to look at our roster too. Nope, because this game's over. <laughs> <laughs> Mitchell Ranley's going to hold on to it, and thank goodness. What a great game tonight from the hangar where Marion Local hangs on to win a barn burner. 70 to 59 over the Spencerville Bearcats. We'll come back here for post-game action on WOSN. Welcome back to Marion Local High School here at the Hangar. We're here with Coach Kurt Guttemuller and Coach. Great win tonight over the league-leading Northwest Conference leader, Spencerville Bearcats. You guys are in control of the Midwest Athletic Conference. Talk a little bit about this win tonight. You know, I, I think Kevin's got an outstanding squad, and he's done a great job. And I just told him after the game, we shook hands, and I just said, hey, we made each other better tonight. You know, we had to get to another level to compete with that team, and we did. We had guys step up, and we had some foul trouble early on with Two of our best players, uh, Jack Kanapke and Tate Hess, sitting for a lot of minutes in the first half. I thought Luke Pullman had stepped up and did a great job off the bench. But like I told, I just said to Kevin, hey, we made each other better tonight. That's going to help them down the road too. So just a fun game to play in. That's one of the things we talked about was the, the mutual respect between teams. We could see it. It was an intense game, but you could see the respect. But, um, you know, this was a district final game in Division Four last year, but you could kind of feel that energy here tonight. Yeah, I'm super excited that they're not in our district this year. That's uh, – that's a tough team to defend, but uh, uh, yeah, it was a lot of excitement in the air. We had the 2003 state championship team here, and Spencerville brought a great crowd, and we've had tremendous crowds here at the hangar this year. It's a great environment to play in, so we're super lucky to have that. Going forward, you have your tournament draw tomorrow. You know, you, you round out the season with a few games. What does it look like going forward for Marion Local? Well, I just told the team after the game, great win. We got better tonight. But we got three weeks of practice. We finally get rid of these midweek games, and we have three full weeks of practice. We got to continue to grow and get better. And if we do that, we can beat any team on our schedule. So, you know, we're excited, but we just know it, it really starts Monday in practice. I want to tell you congratulations as well, earning your 200th victory last night. They did a little ceremony for you uh, before the game. Congratulations. You know, talk a little bit about those 200 wins. You know, the, the 200 wins are a product of great kids coming from great parents having great assistant coaches and community support. That's what 200 wins is all about. You know, I played a very small part in that, but uh, I will say it was a nice birthday gift last night. I would disagree. You know, fantastic coach. We appreciate you coming on here tonight. We wish you the best the rest of the way. Congratulations. Good luck the rest of the way, coach. Thank you, John. All appreciate right, thank it. you. Yep. Bring Danny Holbrook back in here. And Danny, we've seen an incredible game tonight. Boy, it was back and forth. You know, Coach even said it here. Felt like a tournament atmosphere. You know, nice preparation, he said, you know, for his team. And talk a little bit about what we just witnessed here at the hangar. Well, we saw two of the premier programs in Northwest Ohio. And hats off to Marion Local. They did exactly what they needed to do. They established post offense like I said they would. And uh, <laughs> they were just dominant tonight. And give a lot of credit to Spencerville. They're a really good ball club. They played really. It's got a little out man tonight. And like I said, they could play ten times and it'd be 5-5. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about our Stolly Insurance Hustle Player Award tonight. We talked about it for like two seconds, right? Yeah. And it was really easy. To, you know, talk a little bit about that award tonight. Well, Jack Kanapke's <laughs> our winner, and he was the best player on the floor sure. tonight. There's no doubt about that. 23 points. He affected the game. When you can affect the game on both ends of the floor, sure. you're something special. Yeah. And, he, you know, he is, as I said, he's one of the premier post players in Northwest Ohio. Hats off to him, and he works really hard. Yeah, yeah. Well, that wraps it up here for Marion Local High School tonight. What a great game we've seen. We want to thank uh, – Dan Caning, Marion Local AD, here for treating us well. I want to thank everybody here as well. And we got a we got a special guest here, right? Here, that's right. This is Freddie the Flyer, right? Freddie the Flyer. Right. Got got 20 years, and they celebrated you last week. We'll talk a little bit about that. Well, it was fun the whole game, you know. 20 years and I'll be Freddie. And I'm, I did a both games and a football and rock ball. <laughs> that is incredible, and we're we're so excited for you. Congratulations and. That'll wrap us up here tonight. We want to thank Wayne Getz and his entire crew. I'm John Zerby for Danny Holbrook. We're saying good night, everybody, and so long, everyone.